Hey, what's up YouTube? It's GHS InfoSec. And right now, the Hack the Box 2022 Cyber Apocalypse CTF is going on. Um, obviously, I'm going to be releasing this video after the CTF is over. So once you see this, the CTF will have ended. And there's a lot of challenges they have on here, so I'm just going to do a few of them. Um, the ones that I find really cool. I'm sure they're all going to be cool. There's 60 challenges in total. And this, uh, the theme for this CTF is the intergalactic chase. So we're going to go ahead and play CTF. Now I've already solved this challenge, but I thought it was really neat, a uh, really awesome forensics challenge. And um, I know most of my viewers have requested more forensics type content. So I'm going to go ahead and showcase this one. It's called Golden Persistence, and it is for 325 points. It's a uh, Rated at a easy difficulty level, but I had a little bit of a challenge with this one. So I'm going to take a look at the challenge description, and it says there's an emergency. A space station near Urkir was compromised. All there, Urkir is considered to be the very embodiment of the neutral state. It is rich of fuel substances, something that Draeger is very much interested in. Thus, there are now fears that the intergalactic war will also affect this neutral planet. If Draeger and his mercenaries manage to maintain unauthorized access in Yukir Space Station and escalate their privileges, they will soon be able to activate the station's defense mechanisms that are able to prevent any spaceship from entering the airspace. For now, the infected machine is isolated until the case is closed. Help Miyuki find their persistence mechanisms so they cannot gain access again. So I've already downloaded the challenge files. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the terminal. And this is um, in a folder called Golden Persistence. And we can see that we are given a zip file. And I've already extracted that. And what we're given is a ntuser.dat file. So the ntuser.dat file is basically a Windows user profile. Uh, you can probably hear my dog scratching in the background. Um, he might participate in this video as well. And there he is. He said, hey. Uh, so anyway, so that's the Windows user profile file. And it loads all kinds of things like your settings your desktop your background all that stuff um, so one way we could try to do this is actually load it up in a windows machine but in this case i actually had trouble doing that um, i could not get the uh, he's uh, tearing up his toys behind me here i could not get the um, the hive file to load in the registry but fortunately for us um, kali linux has a tool called reg lookup and if you look for a help menu there's not going to be one um I, I tried running the help menu so eventually what i did is i just ended up doing reg lookup on ntuser.dat and this is going to give a lot of information so before i actually pipe it in the list there's like seven thousand some odd lines or something in here um actually in the um if we do a wc-l on ntuser.dat there are 2648 lines and so that's a lot of information to to sift through now we could go the strings route and do uh, less on that and take a look at the strings individually but you don't get a lot of context into what's inside this uh, ntuser.dat file so um, you, you will find some interesting information but with the as you can see from above like with the the reg lookup you actually can see the registry key paths for a lot of these um, entries here so what we can do is we can run our reg lookup dat and pipe that into less and we're going to just start sorting through this there's going to be a lot to go through so i'll speed this part up a little bit um, and once i find something interesting i'll i'll kind of uh, pause the frame and and show you what i find All right, so um, I kind of just got tired of scrolling through that, to be honest, and you guys don't want to watch that. Um, I know I sp I'm speeding it up, but so one thing we can see, a lot of times if you're going to have something that runs automatically, there, there could be a registry key um, in software, Microsoft Windows, current version run, and then there's this strange uh, key here that is end up present in this ntuser.dat file. And what it's doing is actually kicking off a PowerShell.exe to run some base 64 encoded something um, so I'm actually going to zoom out just a little bit so we can get all of this and what we can do since we're on Linux um, it's fairly easy to do this you can just copy uh, this text here this is just going to end up being some type of base 64 and we will uh, close this out well actually I'm going to split the screen 
so we can keep that open and let's go into our golden persistence file or directory and then I'm going to create a file called uh, PowerShell B64 and then I'm just going to paste this in here and so we have this for notes for later and if we cat this file and pipe it over into base64 tag D we can see that we get a PowerShell script and so what I'm actually gonna do is just go to the top of this thing and you can see right off the bat it's defining a function called ENCR I'm assuming that means encrypt and then we go down and we're creating various byte objects and it's doing some operations on the bytes in this and it's going to return a buffer and then we have another function called hex to bin and it defines some parameters we have to use when we're calling this function and uh, this actually is a mandatory parameter um, so the or excuse me I guess the string parameter is mandatory so and down below that we actually um, after we do the operations on that we get this um, these variables called encrypted one two three four and five and then a final encrypted which is basically just a concatenation of all of those uh, various variables and then we're going to run our hex to bin function and then it's going to run the encr function and then it's going to store that into a decrypted string and then it's going to pipe that into iex so what we can actually do is we can go back to the top here and we since I'm using tmux one of the really nice features of tmux is that you can um, in, go into a selection mode and just scroll down and copy um, what you want here and I don't want this IEX um, you guys probably know from watching lots of John Hammond videos that IEX is invoke expression so whenever it gets piped into that or if an expression starts with that it's going to actually invoke something and we don't know what this does yet so we don't want to do that um, we can just kind of let this thing do its magic and basically decrypt itself so so now that we have that copied we can actually go back out and well we, we can keep it zoomed in that's not a big deal uh, let's vim script.ps1 because this is a PowerShell file and with PowerShell core you can um, actually run PowerShell on Linux so I'm going to set paste and then I'm going to paste all this in and we have our PowerShell script so let's go ahead and make sure that we have everything that we think we do um, so it starts with function that's what it should start with um, so I think we're good to go so let's go ahead and try and run this and I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes but this was the the problem that I ran into uh, so uh, once we try to run this we're gonna get a bunch of errors so going to the top the very first pro there's a lot of divide by zeros so something's missing here um, and going to the top there is a lot of information that is really helpful to us so it says first you cannot call a method on a null valued expression so the, what it's referring to like this dot get bytes this is a method if you're familiar with Python if you're uh, calling a function or like some string dot to upper or dot upper or whatever for like a string function um, that actually is the method that it's it's talking about right there and the null valued expression it's referring to is this but we'll we'll cover that in a minute the other problem we have is since we're not on a Windows system we're not going to be able to get anything in this path and so we've got to figure out how to get this data these keys uh, H key current user software ZYB some other stuff and then this this uh, this key here so we've got to be able to get that data but fortunately since we have our uh, reg lookup tool we can actually find that stuff in the registry of this ntuser.dat file so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out and come on over to this other window and let's go to the top and let's actually not zoom in uh, oh, I just killed that okay all right whatever uh, less okay so let's actually not zoom in 
And let's go open up our um, script one. And I believe it starts at line 62 or somewhere about there. Okay, since we know we have these five encrypted um, things we're looking for, I'm actually just going to uh, copy this and paste it down below. So, and I'm going to put a space actually um, in here so that way we can see what it is we're looking for. And then I'm going to delete this line, this line, oh, this line, this line, and this line because we're actually going to. I think I deleted too much. Uh, yeah. We're actually going to find these keys and we're just going to hard code the values that we get from each one of these in um, our, from our registry or into user.dat. So the first one we're looking for is this ZYB7. And so let's go over here. And anytime you're using less or if you're reading a man page or, or anything like that, um, you can type a forward slash and then search for whatever string it is you're looking for. So Z Y B seven, that should be good enough. And we can see we have a key here. And so this dot T three R B K is what it's looking for. So we need the value of this, which is going to be this last part. Um, so I'm going to zoom back in on this, copy this key value here. And then I'm going to go down to, let's get out of visual mode. I'm going to go down to our encrypted one. And then I'm going to wrap this in quotes because it is a string. And PowerShell expects you to wrap strings in quotes, uh, much like other languages do. Uh, we'll save this. We can actually delete this line now. The next one we're going to look for is BJQ. So if we go back to the top, because they might not be in this order. Um, I found that out the hard way <laughs> that uh, it's not going to necessarily be in the order you're looking for. So we have this other key and we're going to copy this. Uh, keep doing that. It's a force of habit. You forget you do something. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the, the, the forward slash search um, trick is, uh, is also a, a nice little Vim feature. So um, if you are a Vim fan like I am, then you can you kind of learn these things. So we've got that one. So we're going to delete this BJQ. We're going to delete this out of our PowerShell script. Now we're looking for T03 capital A. So going back to the top with GG forward slash T03 capital A. And we've got that one there now, so we can copy this key. And paste that. Now we can delete the T03 line. Now we're looking for NV50. And actually, I think I saw that one over here. Yeah, that one actually is, is right here. So I'm just going to go ahead and zoom back in and get this key here. And we can get rid of this line. And now we're looking for JX66. So just go back to the top, slash JX66. And we get our last key. So we're not out of the woods yet. Um, we need to get this added in here. Uh, having trouble typing today, so I do apologize. <laughs> so now we can delete this line. All right, so we've got our hard-coded values that we were looking for. And if, if we go ahead and try and run this now, uh, we're going to do pwsh script.ps1. And we're still getting errors. And I, I could not figure this out. I don't know why for the life of me. But again, we're getting this. Um, we get back to the top we're getting this uh, 
method null message thing. Um, that's strange. Huh. I wonder, I wonder why I can't find that section. Runtime exception. Okay, here we go. Here we go. All right, you cannot call a method on a null valued expression once again. So, yeah, I, it, it took me forever to figure this out. So, I'm going to go back into Vim and let's go down to line 62 because that's the line that it said we were on. And this is the line we're looking at. You have this dollar sign ENC expression, I guess, uh, here. And so, if I go back to the top and I try and search for dollar ENC, that's the only place I see it except I was wrong that's not the only place you see it if you go down to the next one on line 71 here is another place that exists so um, this is why it, it's important to you know read through whatever code you're trying to examine and you know figure out the pieces that are broken so you can fix them and that's essentially what we're doing here we did that with those keys we didn't have for our encrypted values we didn't have any of that stuff we're not on a windows machine so if i take this and oh let me undo that let me just this line that's all i want and if i paste this before this gets called and you know uh, scripting languages are very um explicit you have to define things before uh, you can actually use them. So this actually never got defined before this was ever called. So uh, that was a problem. So if we write and quit, and now we run our PWSH on script one, we can see that we actually get some output this time. And that's that's what we expected. So we're setting a path variable. This is what's going to get piped in the, um, IEX. And the path variable is going to be uh, this program data windows golden f.exe. And if it exists, um, it's going to store it in a variable called exist. It's going to test path to see if it's there. And then it's going to start a process of this golden f.exe uh, on, on path. That's what the path variable is. Else it's going to make a directory called that. And then it's going to invoke a web request if that file doesn't exist. And it's going to download it from this URL here. It's going to put it in an out file. And it's going to set the flag variable, which is what we actually were looking for. Uh, golden fang is not stealthy enough so after all that um, beating our head against the wall we were able to actually get the flag for this challenge so I thought this was really fun I thought it was a fantastic challenge um, like I said I'm not gonna post all the uh, I'm not gonna solve all 60 challenges I'll just tell you that right now <laughs> but, um, I'm gonna do the best I can with the CTF uh, I don't anticipate posting many videos up about this maybe two or three uh, just to kind of get some more content up um, but yeah let me know what you think let me know what you thought of this challenge let me know if you uh, really enjoyed it if you like this kind of stuff uh, please like and subscribe I want to thank all my recent subscribers and uh, everybody for showing your support and uh, I hope you enjoyed it so thanks for watching